Isn't he gorgeous? This is Milo. He's a Southern Brown Bandicoot. And apart from being a real cutie, he and his subspecies were actually once commonplace all the way across Australia. But because of a lack of habitat, they're finding it hard going. This is Bandicoot country. On a property wedge between two national parks near Mount Lofty and the Adelaide Hills is the home of conservation biologist and bandicoot specialist, Dr Jasmine Packer. Beautiful. This is a special bit of vegetation. It is, yeah. We're in the biodiversity hotspot. And this is one of our really special plants. Okay. So, so it only grows here in the Mount Lofty Ranges, nowhere else in the world. It's called the Mount Lofty ground berry. It doesn't have its flowers and berries out here on the tip. Mm -hmm. it's, all the action happens wow. down here on the base. So these are actually the tiny little flowers. It gets this absolute mass of these beautiful pink berries all clustered all around the base and bandicoots love them. Dr Jasmine Packer really does know what bandicoots like. After all, she's been studying these little marsupials in cooperation with the local land care groups and the University of Adelaide for the last 12 years. So bandicoots like dense, thick habitat. So up to about a metre high and so dense that you have to really push through it to get through. But they also need this understory with a mix of different plants within it. So this is one of the tools that's been really helpful in our bandicoot research. So it's a motion sensor? Yeah, it is. Yep, so bandicoots come along and that triggers the sensor. Mm -hmm. So then the camera can take a photo and some video. Why are they so special? Oh, apart from the fact that they're really cute, because they're endangered. So we're really worried about them. So in this area, Mount Lofty Ranges, Adelaide Hills, there used to be eight species, including the bilby. Mm -hmm. Now there's one species in that family left. It's the southern brown bandicoot, and it's endangered. Jasmine and her team of researchers set out to find why the bandicoot is endangered and what they could do to help them. So we did a lot of tagging mm -hmm. um, bandicoots and then we would put radio trackers on them. We knew all of these individual bandicoots, about 300 bandicoots. Mm -hmm. Knew them all, um, knew when they were born, when they were having babies. Were they isolated colony? Yep, so we found these different populations are isolated. So what we need to do is get some genetic mixing happening mm -hmm. to build links between these patches of bushland. And to build links between patches of bushland, they came up with the concept of bushland bungalows, halfway houses, if you like, to encourage bandicoot migration and enable the bandicoots to meet and mate with their more distant cousins, thereby strengthening the population through genetic diversity. We know from our research that bandicoots will only travel five metres from dense habitat. Mm -hmm. So we would love people to build a bandicoot bungalow, put it, two to five metres from existing habitat where they think there might be bandicoots. Mm -hmm. Then the bandicoots can come and hang out in their bungalow and then they could build another one. So they can be stepping stones from dense habitat to extend the habitat that the bandicoots have. So how do we do this? Super easy. Look, there's just four steps. So the first thing is we've got to get these posts into here. So these first posts are to anchor in the corners, make it really nice and solid so a fox can't move it. And then we're gonna build in two picket fence with smaller stakes. And those smaller stakes are so that the bandicoots can get in, but um, predators can't get their paws in. And the third step is to weight down the crate. We've got some old pine logs that we're gonna to use today and that stops um, anything getting to yeah. the bandicoots as well. OK, so where does this go then? Are you going to go down? And the last step is to get some brush and put it on top. So lots of different bits to make a tangly mess up to a metre high, which is that great bandicoot habitat. The last bit is to decorate it, Sophie. 
Oh, looks great. With the bungalow complete, I thought it my time to add my own touch. So I know we're in this beautiful bushland setting, but I thought I'd bring some more local plants to add, hopefully beneficial for bandicoot habitat. I've got some prickly things, some prickly isopogons and a prickly hakea. There's a couple of local um, corias, goodenias, banksias, and also some grass trees. Now I know they're rather slow growing, so I've also brought a big one. Are they useful for bandicoots? They're great for, for um, bandicoots. They nest in under the skirt. Have you got any natives on your patch? Uh, we've done a, a wildlife corridor. Oh, that's um, awesome. Yeah. Perfect. Now, theoretically... Yep, yep. Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, oh gorgeous. I think that's it, Sophie. Thank you so much. It's awesome. Bandicoots are going to be happy. I'm sure, they're going to move in. If you've got bandicoots in your area, Jasmine wants to encourage as many people as possible to build bungalows. You can find out all the information on the Gardening Australia website, including bandicoot bungalow designs and bandicoot-friendly plantings. <laughs>